So, Julie, uh, good to see you again. Thanks, um, Let me just check, I, 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 how are you and yourself at the moment? Yeah, I feel good, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm busy, doing lots of things, but I'm, I'm always busy. <laughs> so yes. that's just the nature of me, really. But I'm feeling good, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, 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 and in, a, in, a, in a good and relaxed mood for, and for, 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 being, for being mentored? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. all right, that's good. So what's on, what's on your mind? What's keeping you awake this week? Mm, well, a few things, and I think a lot of it is around changes at home to do with work and the kids and so James, my, my husband. Um, so Isabella starts school soon, so she's four now and she starts school in wow. September. I know, she's grown up so quickly. So she's going through that transition of every two weeks we're going to the school and she goes for the visits um, and getting ready for her starting in September, which means quite a significant change in routine for her. Um, because bearing in mind she's been in nursery since she was three months old from 7.30 till 6, Monday to Friday, she's gonna go um, into a different environment and a different transition in terms of childcare pre and post school. And then we've got Tyler, he's three, turned three last week. So he's at, still at the nursery that he's been at since he was three months as well in the routine that, that Bella's in. Um, at the same time, James uh, moved to head office uh, with the organisation he works for. He's been there for two years now. And previously, he worked in stores all of his career life with the organisation he's worked for, which he's worked for since he was 16. And um, he never particularly enjoyed working in stores, but he loves his job in head office, absolutely loves his job. And I think the consequence of him really loving his job and having a boss that he really likes working for, that has nurtured and supported him, his jobs have really taken off and, and grown quite significantly. And the consequence of that is he does a lot more hours now than he did perhaps six, 12 months ago. So this morning he was out of the door at six o'clock. Um, he will collect the kids this evening at nursery because I'm, I'm not there. But you know, he'd get in the door at, at so 6.30, 7, 7.38. So pretty much the childcare is left to me and kind of the running of things is left to me. But mm. the consequence of that is that I'm not sure how that's going to impact on me and my career because I've been sort of forging ahead for the last few years and um, in my career and doing lots of studying, so my, my doctorate and then the PG SAS in teaching, and I've just finished the PG SAS at Ots of Bricks, and I'm thinking, well, what's next? I'm very keen to, get, to look at promotion to associate professor, but there's quite a big leap from senior lecturer to associate professor, or at least that's what I'm led to believe. And in my mind, how do I make that leap from senior lecturer to associate professor and be able to put the time and effort in when James's job is getting busier and busier and he wants to commit more time to work because he loves his job. Um, and Isabella's going to school and she's going to need me more than she's done when she's essentially been in nursery full time. And so I don't know whether I can give my promotion the time and attention it needs when Isabella needs me and James needs me more because he feels it's important for him to focus on his career. So do I slow down in terms of my career to then help James with his career and focus on Bella and school or can I do everything? And that's what I don't okay. know. Okay. I, it's interesting you say James loves his career. <clears throat> yeah. What about you? I love my career. I'm really, I'm really lucky. I love my job, okay. and uh, I, I love all, all the things I get to do because I'm very fortunate. I get to do lots of interesting things um, and lots of different things. Mm. But I guess the reason why I say he loves his job is because for probably 15 years he really didn't. So it's only in the last two years since his move to head office that he's really found a passion for a job that he enjoys, and the consequence of that is that he's much happier in himself and we're much happier as a family unit and so I want to con to help him and support him because it has a really positive impact on James and I and the kids as a as a family unit. So if I were to repackage what you've just been saying to me mm. um, it would be a question that does it act as in is it in, is it necessary 
in order to give James the, free, the, the, the space that he needs for you to sacrifice your career? And that's, and I think that's a don't know, David, because his job is becoming much more demanding and he's doing more hours. And I think that's a consequence of him really enjoying the job. I don't know whether the, the job demands that he does more hours or because he loves the job, he does more hours. And it's probably a combination of the two. The job is more demanding, it's grown in size over the last year and he loves the job, so therefore he's doing more hours as a consequence of that. But the impact is that I now do more in terms of the home, the childcare, and just everything really, in terms of organising our lives. So I now have less time than perhaps I did a year or two ago, where my job was the priority. Yes. And. To what extent would you say both of you have your identity tied up with what you do with the jobs? Yeah, you see, that, that is an interesting question yeah. because to some extent I think James does because he's never worked for any other organisation since he was 16. He's only ever known one company and he doesn't intend to ever leave, really. He sees himself working there long term, um, particularly in this new role and this new environment. And for me, I love working. I love working. I love my job. I love doing different things. Um, do I define myself as a, my identity as an academic? I, I don't know. And I'm not sure I should be saying I don't know whether I mm. <laughs> define myself as an academic. I think I define myself more so as a consultant which has an academic hat, but it also has lots of other hats. But you're also well. a mum. I am, yeah. yeah and, and a wife. So, so defining yeah. oneself, one's identity is much, much more holistic than that. Yes, um, yeah. But it's very easy, for, for, particularly for men, to get trapped into a sense of identity, which is about them and their job, mm. as opposed to thinking of themselves more holistically. Mm. Um, and very often, the need to work longer hours as you've already intuited, is more of an addiction mm. than a necessity. Yeah, yeah. So I guess th that leads me to, to the question, what is the conversation that you need to have with James about this? Mm. I think I need to have a conversation around how we both balance our careers as well as giving sufficient time to the children and to each other. Yeah. And I think it's about us finding a balance that we're happy with. Because um, obviously it makes me happy that he's happy. Mm. And it's great, you know, he's, he's really happy. Um, so therefore I want him to continue to, to do that. So if it means he does have to make a greater commitment or he has to do more hours, then I'm supportive of that. Um, if ultimately he's is happy in his role. Um, but at the same time, I'm conscious about what I need to do over the next one to two to three years if I'm going to get promoted. Yeah. So the children are at the heart of this, aren't they? They are really. Yeah. 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 So it's quite helpful to think about what it means to be, uh, to be a mum. And not just what it means to be a mum, but to be a good enough mum. Because it, it, it's, it's natural to beat ourselves up. You know, I'm not being a good mum. I'm not there all the time for them. I'm not, not doing this, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not helping them with their with things. I'm not noticing that they're, that they're, they're not looking at their pictures that they bring home from <laughs> school. Yes, oh, I know. <laughs> yes, and all of these things. So we can easily beat ourselves up. But what's a mm. good enough mum? Yeah, I don't know, and I, I you know, I, I feel that I do miss quite a lot because. Um, because of the amount of work that I do. Mm. And, um, and I'm really conscious when Bella goes to school that I need to make sure that I don't miss things. Um, because most things, when it comes to the kids, are my responsibility. So I, I wanna make sure that I don't miss anything, but I'm not sure how I can make sure I don't miss anything. So, you know, the example last night where I went to collect the two of them and the, the key worker said, oh, Bella's got some drawings to show you. And, I said, and Bella said, yes, let's go and have a look at them. And I said, 
yeah, yeah, just grab the coats and the bags and then we'll have a look. And by the time I'd grabbed the coats and the bags and Isabella and Tyler and I'd done the handover with the key workers and she'd given me a letter for an invoice and a letter for something else and Isabella's school picture. And I was late in town with two children and coats and bags and we left and I forgot to look at the pictures. And then this morning the key worker said to me, oh, did you look at the pictures? Oh, I says, no, no. I, uh, so Isabella ran to her bag and she got the pictures and we sat there and we looked at them and she was really happy and you know and obviously that was really important to her but I was so wrapped up in collecting everything and grabbing everything and getting out of the door at 6 six fifteen that you know, I forgot to look at the pictures mm. that were so important to her and what impact does that have on 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 Bella that I, I you know I forget to do something like that yes I, I guess one of the things that we've learned over the years is, is the quality of interaction and quality of life for the children you know, mm. quality of being a mum yeah. is, is more important than quantity. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you, were to, if you were to have a family contract from with James putting his, what, what's expected of James, you know, and the, the, so contractually between you, what's, what you contract to do and what the children contract to do because they're part of the whole picture. Yeah. So what's the family contract? What are you going to offer each other so that you have the greatest quality of life together? Mm. What would that look like? Well, I think one thing that does work really well is we do have a, an mm. agreement, almost like a contractual agreement, I guess, that at weekends we don't do any work. So the laptop doesn't come out for James. I don't get the laptop out. So when it gets to Friday night at whatever time, sometimes I do work on a Friday night, I must admit. So when it gets to going to bed on a Friday night, then on a Saturday and Sunday, we don't do any work and it is just family time. And we do you know, football and swimming and all the mm. things that people do with their kids. And, and so we have an agreement that we don't do that. But pretty much Monday to Friday is work in the day and the kids go to bed and then work in the evening. And that's kind of an agreement that we have. And I'm not sure that's great, you know, that Monday to Friday is work only, pretty much, and then weekends is children's time only. But it, it seems to work at the moment but that we do get some time when it's just with the kids and, and in the week we can focus on, on work. What do you think the kids are going to remember in 20 years' time? Oh, gosh. That's a hard question, David. <laughs> what will they remember? Well, hopefully lots of fun things, I'd hope. I'd hope they'd look back and think that they had lots of fun. And I'd hope they'd look back and think that, you know, James and I were great parents. Yeah. And so in order to achieve that, does it have to be through sacrificing your career? I don't know. Okay. But that's the core question, isn't it? Yeah. And I would have thought with your ingenuity and with the goodwill of the children and the goodwill of James and the right conversation, it shouldn't be beyond the bounds of possibility, or not just possibility, it should be, it should be very e relatively easy yeah. to can get a, contra a contract between you that enables you both to be fulfilled. Because ultimately, if you're not feeling fulfilled in your career, that will, that will, and that, that James will not feel happy about that. So nobody yeah. wins. So yeah. it's how do you actually support each other? Yeah. And at the same time, give that quality of attention to the children, that, so they will remember the mm. laughter and the, you know, the, the happiness and the things that you did together, the adventures that you did together. Yeah. Not just that we, you know, whenever you have the opportunity to do so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I guess it, it, there's that question. It comes back to the what's, what's the conversation you're going to have with James and how will you prepare for that conversation? Mm. And that will take a bit of time to think through and to, mm. to work out. And, that, you know, I think he, he is very supportive and he always has been because mm. I wouldn't have achieved what I have today if it wasn't for the support that he's given me and the support of others. But at the same time, I see his career taking off now, which is a good thing, mm. because for a very long time, he's supported me. And I've 
being allowed the space and the time to, to study and to change careers and, and, and get new qualifications, which all helps me in my career. Mm. Um, and so I guess the worry in the back of my mind is, is that, well not the worry, is should I slow down the pace of what I'm doing and my work to enable him to develop more and to be there more now that Bella's making the transition to school and be happy as a senior lecturer for a number of years. But I'm not sure I'll ever <laughs> <laughs> be happy standing still. Or would you say, in terms of recognising the sacrifices that he's made to get you to where you are now, yeah, yeah. is it really an appropriate, is it really appropriate to be, to be able actually to um, say, well, actually, we'll forget all that sacrifice, you know, we, we're just going to throw all that away? Again, yeah. uh, it's part of the conversation, part of the contract. Yeah. Because he's made that sacrifice for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and between you, there is a, a discussion to be had about whether or not he wants to see that, or we both want to see that, that lose its impetus. Mm. Mm. What was it all for, otherwise? Yeah. Yeah, and that's a good question. What was it all for? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Well, how was it for you, Julie? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it was unexpected. Um, uh, I think my plan was just simply to talk about future career and sort of where I go from here. And, and actually, it was a much deeper conversation around the kids and James and how we prioritise things. And um, I wasn't expecting to, to get emotional at all. I think it was when David said, you know, that it's, when it comes down to it, it's really all about the kids. That's the, the root of it. And I suppose it, it really is. It's, you know, James and I, we want to get things right for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we both want to have careers. And I think that's probably a common dilemma that a lot of, a lot of parents face when both of you want to have a, a career. Yeah. Um, mm. But it was David's questions, I think, really got to the root of what the underlying issues were fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. I think you got to the... It pretty quickly. Yeah, it, mm. it, 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 it's something that we. That it all comes back to what's the conversations people have got to have. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes you intuit something. Mm. You know, you can see th mm. through it, and just one little comment or, or, or question mm. can make a big difference in terms of you know, make, owning uh, owning up to what you know what you know. Yeah. But aren't yet willing to face face up to. Mm. Mm. And you're right, and you really push me at least two, if not three times, on what's the conversation that I need to have with James. And, uh, and you're right, you know, we do need to have a conversation around what does the next year, two, three years look like um, with this change that's about to take place. And so you're right to challenge me on what conversation do I need to have, because at the moment I'm having the conversation with myself. Mm. And I need to involve another party in that conversation, so you quite rightly brought that to my attention because I wonder how long I simply would have had a conversation with myself about this going around in circles. Yeah. I'm yes. not getting anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. It was interesting to see a master at work in this actually. Mm. Yeah. Um, because several times you said um, something around, um, do I have to put my career on hold? And, and that's obviously your, your sticking point at the moment is, do I have to do it all? And yeah. so taking into consideration everything else, I think, was obviously the, the useful point for you. It, it enabled you to see the bigger picture, um, mm -hmm. which I think is probably, was quite helpful for you, mm -hmm. um, it appeared to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought there was really interesting use of questions as well. To, and kind of when I was listening to what you were saying, it wasn't something that I naturally would have, a question I naturally would have asked, but it, it brought a whole new level to kind of the conversation mm. that was going on. I found that particularly interesting. Kind of like, what's underneath this? What's, okay, so what underpins that and, and where does that come from? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.